welcome to footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you our NFL Week 5 preview between the Philadelphia Eagles and the New York Giants. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with the Eagles. I've always said the Eagles have one of the fastest teams in the NFL, and this week versus the Giants, I look for Philadelphia to try to beat the Giants with speed. For example, getting to the perimeter in a running game, finding creative ways to get Deshaun Jackson the football quickly, keeping the offensive line on the move with misdirection run plays, all of which are advantageous to the Eagles having success versus that Giants defense. Defensively, keep an eye on the outside linebackers and when and where they apply pressure. Connor Barwin and Trent Cole are two guys that can really bring it off the edge. And the main key, in my opinion, will be in the secondary. Can the Eagles avoid giving up the big play deep down the field? And I would find creative ways to put Earl Wolf, the strong safety, the rookie strong safety out of North Carolina State, in a robber type situation when sending pressure. I love the instincts and I love what he brings to the table as a pass defender. Offensively for the Giants, I think it's a conflict between philosophy and personnel. And personally, I believe the Giants are built more to spread teams out and play up tempo as opposed to occasionally spreading teams out and trying to run power. Personnel and philosophy have to get on the same page in order for the Giants to be successful this week versus Philadelphia. Now defensively, this is a familiar opponent personnel wise, but a different scheme. A lot will be asked of their line back and forth to make plays in the hole versus the Eagles running game while the defensive line maintains the line of scrimmage. Now in the secondary, they can't allow Deshaun Jackson to run free or even get a free release off the line of scrimmage. And the way the Giants can offset the speed difference of the Philadelphia Eagles is with power. Power slows down speed so that way you can be in better position to execute. The Philadelphia Eagles can get pressure on Eli Manning this week by utilizing a Zorro Blitz in certain situations. Now, a Zorro Blitz is a zone rotation blitz, so you're going to rotate your zone to the side you're blitzing. I'm going to show you how they could have that happen this week versus the Giants. When the Giants go spread, we have Zorro Blitz. I'm going to show you right there. We're going to have three guys in deep coverage and three guys in underneath coverage, but we're rotating the zone to the side we're blitzing. We're going to blitz strong side. We're going to designate that by the running back on this side of the quarterback. So what we're gonna do, we have your cornerbacks drop in your deep third. Cornerbacks dropping in their deep third. We're gonna have the safeties play a game right here. We're gonna have this safety drop down into flat coverage, drop this safety over, rotate, and then drop back into the deep third. So you see one rotation here. We're gonna have your five technique push up fill, C-gap contain. Five technique push to the outside, attack the C-gap. We're gonna bring the outside backer as well along the C-gap, and we're bringing the inside backer to the strong side as well. So you have three guys coming from the strong side of the formation. Your nose tackle is gonna hold court at the line of scrimmage, and what we're gonna do here is gonna have the linebacker drop in and slow play. So he's responsible for the middle. That's his rotation zone. Drop him down to curl the flat. I'll hook the curl, I'm sorry. And now we have on the front side where we won. Two, three, three guys underneath, three guys deep, still getting pressure on the strong side. So you see where we rotated the zone. We have guys flowing this way. Your backers flowing this way. Your safety's flowing this way. The other safety's flowing this way. We have your corners dropping in your deep third. So you see where the Zorro comes from, the zone rotation blitz to the side you're blitzing from. We're blitzing strong side. We're rotating the zone strong side. And that's the way the Eagles can get pressure versus Eli Manning and that New York Giants offensive line this week. One of my pet peeves is when people say, oh, the running back has to pick up the blitz, where there's a lot of ways you can pick up the blitz. One way the Giants can get all of their playmakers on the field, that's David Wilson, Victor Cruz, Ruben Randall, and also Hakeem Nix on the field at the same time and not worry about blocking the blitz by not, is by not blocking the blitz. You don't have to block the blitz in order to be successful. That way you can give David Wilson a chance to make big plays for you in the passing game. So let's say right here, you're running your base. Let's say if this... The nickel back is coming off the edge blitzing and you want David Wilson to pick up the nickel, the nickel back. You know what? Let's not even say the nickel back because they're questioning whether or not he can pick up a linebacker. So let's say the linebacker is blitzing. You have Victor Cruz running a route or what have you. You have these guys running, running routes. Why would you force David Wilson to pick this guy up when you could simply flare him out? What that's going to do is going to put this linebacker in a situation now that he can't get to this play here. It also gets David Wilson in space and it allows Eli Manning a built-in hot read. So this is how you can block the blitz but not blocking the blitz because now you have an advantage where you have your speedy back on the outside where this guy has no way to get over here unless he peels back his blitz responsibility and gets outside. But what you've done 
is, is effectively eliminated one extra guy from coming, and now you can hit one of your wide receivers on one of their routes or even your tight end as well. So that's one way they can block the blitz by not blocking the blitz. Another example, let's just draw up another example here out the same 3-4 defense that the Eagles run. Let's say they want to bring pressure off the corner. So let's just say you want to bring pressure here, right? And they're going to rotate strong safety. You're going to bring pressure and drop this guy. They're going to bracket Ruben Randall. You want to bring the cornerback on the blitz, and you're also bringing pressure here. What you want to do, if you're Eli Manning, you want to have the offensive line squeeze down inside step, protect inside out, and you still swing David Wilson to the outside. What that does, one, if this cornerback is still going to blitz, you still have a receiver running off and also has a running back out in space versus a linebacker or a safety, or this cornerback is going to calm his, his blitz and take that running back. So now you still have the inside blocked up as well. So again, the Giants can block the blitz by not blocking the blitz. And it also puts David Wilson in a situation where he can be successful. You get that 4-2-8 speed out in space where he has a lane and he can take the distance this week versus the Philadelphia Eagles. The X Factor for the Eagles will be their vertical passing game. They do a great job of attacking deep down the field. I think they're going to have to attack early and often versus this giant secondary in order to generate big plays. The X Factor for the Giants will be their defensive tackles. When you're facing a spread team like the Philadelphia Eagles, the pressure has to come from within. So those interior defensive linemen have to get pushed from guard to guard in order to slow down what the Eagles want to do offensively. Now here are some coaching points for both teams in this ball game. For the Eagles, you want to funnel and pass in the secondary, essentially a zone defense until the Giants' offensive line can prove they can better pass protect, they can switch to man coverage, and also I would play the run on the way to the quarterback. Once again, until the Giants prove they can run the football, you can get aggressive in your pressure packages and keep your foot on the offensive gas when you have the football. This is a team that plays fast, they play up tempo, continue to keep your foot on the gas, and that would allow you to put up points versus this defense. And for the Giants, you want to find a way to get David Wilson in space. Here's a guy that has the breakaway speed that can flip field position in an instant. You want to create those opportunities for him. It doesn't necessarily have to be a screenplay. It could be a swing, a flare, inside zone, outside zone. Allow him to see a lane and get through it. This is the guy you want with the football in his hands. And I would also keep the fullback and tight end on the move. That would put you in better position for wham blocks. Another way to create those lanes for David Wilson to take it to the house. And I would combo cover the Eagles wide receiver. Maybe go zone versus Deshaun Jackson, man versus Riley Cooper, as well as Jason Avant. Those slower guys, as opposed to Deshaun Jackson, you want to play zone, have him work through different zones and get open. That's how you can effectively create an opportunity defensively to get pressure on Vic and slow down what the Eagles want to do throwing the football. I like Philadelphia in this ball game. This is the reason why the Eagles always give the Giants problems. It's the team speed. When you look at LaShawn McCoy in the back, but LaShawn Jackson out there on the flanks, even the tight ends are a matchup problem for the Giants linebacker. So I like the Eagles to go on the road and knock off the G-men. This will be a track meet, and that's the one race the Eagles can definitely win in this football game. And I also want to give a huge shout-out to Eagle fan forums and Giant fan forums for always showing football game plan support.